Hey everyone, Pastor Nathan here. We're continuing our, our Tuesday morning devotional series that's supplementing our Back to Basics Firm Foundation series on Sunday mornings. This series on Tuesdays is just hitting some of the highlights in between our, our Sunday morning sermons. And last Sunday we talked about this guy by the name of Daniel. And this next Sunday we're skipping way ahead to Jesus and his birth narrative. There's a period of about 450 years in there, 400 of which God is essentially silent. God had told his people this was coming. They had abandoned him. They had said, you know, we don't want to listen to you. We want to do our own thing. So God says, okay, you can do your own thing, but there's going to be a famine coming. It's a famine of the words of the Lord. So for 400 years, God's people wait. What's God going to do next? How's he working? What's he going to do for us as people? This is incredibly helpful for us in the 21st century, even today, because there's a few, few, few things that, that, that we need to hear. The first is we're not alone when we wait. God's people have a posture in some ways of waiting. If you go to the, the, the prophecy of John, the apostle, um, you'll see that God's people wait often within that prophecy at the end of the New Testament. And in fact, his prayer at the end of his prophecy is a waiting prayer. Come quickly, Lord Jesus, meaning you're not here yet and we want you to be here. We're waiting for you to return. A second thing is that even when God is silent, God is not inactive. For that 400 year period, God was still ruling and reigning over history. He hadn't just kind of gone on a, a walkabout around the universe. He was still working things out for the benefit of his people, so for, to set things up for his son, Jesus Christ, to come into the world, and then also to set things up for the ministry of the church in bringing the gospel good news of Jesus Christ to the world. The third thing is that for us, we don't have to experience a famine of the word of the Lord ever. Yes, there can be dry seasons spiritually. And yes, there are times when it can feel like God is further away from us um, than at other times. Like sometimes he feels really near. And sometimes it can feel like we've wandered away. But we don't have to experience a, a famine of the word of the Lord. You know, the, the writer of the book of Hebrews says that, you know, in previous times he spoke through the prophets but now he has revealed, you know, spoken through his son, Jesus Christ, to which we can add the word made flesh. We have his word. We have, the, we have the writings, the Old and the New Testament all compiled together. And we have Jesus's words, his words of comfort and his words of hope and his words of challenge to us. You know, he, he speaks to us in every season. God sometimes feels silent. Like if we're asking for direction or for asking for healing or for asking for, for, for something in our, in our life or we're waiting for something and we're asking the Lord, what do you want me to do? Um, where do you want me to be? How do you want me to, to go about this life? And at least in a specific situation where we begin to ask God, you know, what, like, well, what do you, what do you desire? What do you want? Um, you know, please give me X, Y, or Z. You can feel like God is silent. Like sometimes God says a lot of not yet. Or, or, or knows that we wish are not yet. And, and, but even in the midst of that silence, you know, we still have God's word and that's where, where he speaks to us. He may be silent on the thing we want him to talk about, but he is not silent about what he has done for us and who he says we are to him. So as we're closing in on, on Christmas, I hope that you will, uh, if you're in a season of waiting, know that you are not alone. If you're in a season of waiting, know that God is still working. He's working on your behalf. He's working uh, for the good of those who love him. And then beyond that, he is not silent. He has spoken to us through his son. He's spoken his words to us. And we have that in scripture. And we, all we have to do to hear from God is to go to his word, to read it, to, 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 to meditate on it, spend time in it. And that's where he's speaking to us. And that's where we can enter into conversation with him. So hope that's helpful for you. And uh, we'll talk again soon.